Welcome to another video in the Formula SAE tutorial series created by SOLIDWORKS. In today's video, we'll be talking about the rendering packages offered by SOLIDWORKS, PhotoView 360 and PhotoWorks, and how we can apply these in Formula SAE. Before we get into either of the actual rendering packages, I'd like to take a moment and talk about how we set appearances in SOLIDWORKS. As an example part, I've opened up this carbon fiber steering wheel. As you can see, it's just white. It's not set as any kind of material or appearance, and I'm going to show you how to change that. First, right click on the part or the face, whatever you're looking to change, and then in the menu of icons, select this little ball that has four colors and says appearances. Clicking on the ball brings up a small menu that shows you how the appearances are laid out based on all the different levels of the part, from the face to the actual sweep to the body, then finally to the part and the assembly level. You can see the different appearances at each level. If I click the box at the assembly level, it will bring me up the options for setting an appearance for this part specifically for this assembly. On the left side of the screen, I'm given the options for setting appearances. I can set it either a component level in the assembly, or I can actually change it and set it the part document level. I'm also able to select by faces, surfaces, bodies, or features. It will give me a brief preview of the appearance, and then at the bottom I can select different colors, transparencies, and which configurations I'd like to use. In this case, I'm going to change the appearance to carbon fiber. To select an appearance file, on the right hand side of the screen, select again the little ball tab that says Appearances and Scenes. Under here we'll be giving many options for appearances such as plastic, metal, glass, fabric. Carbon fiber is actually contained under plastic and under the composites folder. At the bottom you'll find carbon fiber epoxy appearance. Clicking on the material on the right hand side will load it up into this tab over on the left hand side. Since the carbon fiber appearance file has a direction to it, there's a new tab above appearances. This allows us to manipulate such things as how the appearance is mapped onto the actual part, we can rotate it, and size it differently if we choose. Once completed, click the green checkbox. SolidWorks includes two rendering options. The one I'm going to focus on here is PhotoView 360. It's perfect for almost everything you would need to do in Formula SAE but you should know what the difference between PhotoView 360 and PhotoWorks is. PhotoView 360 is a separate program. It has fewer options than PhotoWorks and is also, I feel, a lot easier to use. But it also results in much better final renders and actually this is where the future of SolidWorks is going. It's most likely that by 2011 all of the features of PhotoWorks will be built into PhotoView 360. This makes PhotoView 360 at the moment perfect for 95% of Formula SAE applications. If you're looking for something a little more robust or that has a lot more features or options, you might want to look into PhotoWorks and some of the options available there. Also, I'll go over briefly how to do decals using PhotoWorks because PhotoView 360, if you're using SolidWorks 2009 SP 3.0, will not allow you to do decals. If you upgrade to SP 4.0 or SolidWorks 2010, you will be able to use decals that are imported into PhotoView 360. Now I'll show you how to render this part in PhotoView 360. As you can see from before, I see many of the appearances already, such as these LEDs up top and these button colors on the front of the steering wheel. Make sure to save your part file, and then browse to the SolidWorks 2009 folder in your program files. Remember that PhotoView 360 is a completely separate program from SolidWorks, and so you'll need to find it in your default install location. To start using PhotoView 360, Click Open File, and then browse to the location of your assembly or the part file that you want to render. By default, PhotoView 360 will load up the last view you had of your part and create a simple rendering. The interface for PhotoView 360 is fairly simple and intuitive to you. At the top are the options for changing appearances, environments, and then creating a final render. And then these two tabs right here allow us to do things such as manipulate the model. We can select certain faces, bodies, parts, assemblies, and change their appearance. Or we can also select the model and choose whether to zoom in or pan or rotate the model. Be aware that every time you make a change, PhotoView will create the given rendering over again. As an example here, if I rotate the part, everything gets blurry and then it has to take a little time to completely re-render the image. To change something about the rendering, just click on the tab you want. In this case, I'll select Appearances. 
and then it's just a drag and drop interface. You can see that a carbon fiber material has already been somewhat applied, but I'm going to reapply it here if I go into the plastic menu and composite, scroll down to carbon fiber epoxy, and then just click and drag and place it on the material. As you can see, it's only changed this face right here. This is because in this tab, I've selected only face as the parts I want to change with my drag and drop actions. If I select part and then do the same thing, it will apply the carbon fiber material to the entire outside of the steering wheel. It should be noted that not all the materials you apply in SolidWorks will show up perfectly in PhotoView 360. So like in this case with carbon fiber, you may have to reapply the same material in order to get the right one. To select a different environment, click the environments ball and will bring up a list of environments you can choose from. Again, just drag and drop onto the rendering. Before creating the final rendering, make sure to select the settings tab. Under settings, you'll see many options such as rotating the environment, adjusting a ground plane height, and you can also change the image resolution. For some of your presentations or pictures, you might want very high resolution images and there are options to set it for this. You can also select the image output format. I standardly pick JPEG, but you can pick something else if you like. When you're satisfied with all your materials and you've set them all, click Final Render. Be aware that depending on your settings and your hardware, this could take a while. On my computer, for an HD size image, it took approximately two and a half minutes. When you're ready to save the image, just click Save Image up here and save to whichever location you want. That's it for using PhotoView 360. As you can see, it's a pretty simple and intuitive program to use that produces great results. The last thing I'd like to cover is adding decals to parts. To do this, we're going to use the built-in PhotoWorks utility. You can also use PhotoWorks to render the parts, but it's my preference to use PhotoView 360. As I said before, the only way you'll be able to get decals to show up in PhotoView 360 is if you're using Service Pack 4.0 for 2009 or if you're using SolidWorks 2010. If you're still using the 3.0 Service Pack for SolidWorks 2009, I recommend going and looking at the PhotoWorks Overview tutorial. This will give you some good tips and tutorials for rendering in PhotoWorks if you need to use decal. For this example, I'm going to add the SolidWorks logo right here to the top of this nose cone. To access PhotoWorks, go up to the Office Products tab, select Office Products, and then select PhotoWorks. This will bring up a number of appearance options up here, but the most important one we're going to use is New Decal. Select New Decal, and then you'll bring up a tab over here on the left hand side that'll give you all the options for adding a decal. First, under decal preview, you're gonna to need to browse to the actual image path of the file you want to use for a decal. Once you've selected the image file, then just select the face or area that you want to apply the decal, or you can select the body as a whole. By default, SolidWorks automatically places the decal in line with whatever view you're in. Since currently I'm in an isometric view, it's trying to place the decal on the part isometrically and obviously it doesn't look very good. To easily solve this, go over to the Mapping tab, and then below here under Mapping, we're going to see several options. We'd like to stick with Projection and Current View, but all we need to do is change our Current View to the Top View, and then over here select the button Update to Current. Now we can use this box to resize and reposition the decal on the part. At the bottom of the mapping section, we also have options for size and orientation. I can rotate the decal if I want, or move it manually, and I can also mirror it in order to get it positioned right. Once you're done, select the green check mark, and you've successfully added your first decal to the part. Once you've applied all the decals to the parts, you can render it here in PhotoWorks, or if you have the ability, you can render it in PhotoView 360. That concludes today's video. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to send me an email at sfalkner at solidworks.com.